Live from the North Carolina News News Desk, this is Steve and Wendy reporting to you on Zoo Adventures today at the North Carolina Zoo, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 10 o'clock. Dateline, May 20th. Topic, Tiny Heroes. I'm so excited to share with you. You guys ready? Gotta have a good intro, right? How's it going today? Chilly and rainy here in North Carolina too. We've had over three inches of rain. That's crazy. Lots going on though, huh? Hope everybody is safe. I'm being good out there. I'm seated today. This is a very unnatural I feel like I'm the best. That's why that's where the news desk came from. Here we are reporting live. Um, it's kind of strange, but because of the animals we're going to share with you, it's nice to be, for me to be down a little bit lower so I can hold the animals and you guys can see really, really well what's going on. So yeah, we're talking about small heroes with a huge job to do. Um, we have three different species we're going to share with you, and hang with us. I know not everybody likes these guys. I know that. But just like we did with snakes, and you guys were amazing with snakes, you hung in there. I want you to see all three species because there's some pretty cool stuff about each one that's kind of important. So do hang in there for the three species that we have today. How exciting. A couple words before we get started. We're going to talk about decomposers. Decomposers, animals that decompose, that, that live in that world, or detritivores. Just uh, might want to tell them why we're in an echoey room. They said it's very echoey today. Oh, it is? Well, we were hoping it wouldn't be. Um, we are in the zoo's lobby. The literally. Lobby. Literally the lobby. Because why, Steve? Because of the temperature, because it's cool outside, we can't be outside with the animals. So this is one of those times we have to be indoors because the animal's temperature requirements say 55 or 60 degrees or warmer to be outside. We also didn't have a whole lot of luck with our signal last time in the classroom. So we came out here, our signal is much better in the lobby. Um, so I apologize for the echoiness. Um, I'll work on that. Maybe I won't be quite as loud. Um, and Wendy might be a little bit closer with the camera, so we'll try to help you guys out, make sure what's going on. So that's why we're indoors again today. Um, we don't like to be indoors, so we want to take you guys outside with us. Um, but today, because of, because of our animal criteria, and it's all about the animals, we've got to make sure they're safe, um, we're going to be indoors today with the three species of decomposers or detritivores, and we'll define those again a little bit later as well. Thanks for reminding me. Appreciate that. So yeah, I'm Steve. That's Wendy. I'm um, happy here. Huge shout out to my daughter. I haven't had a shout out to my daughter. So, Ty Elizabeth, I love you very much. It's so great to see you. Hope you're out there. Be safe, she's in Michigan. So it's great to see you, Ty. Love you. She's on, hi Ty. She's on? She's on. Yay, hope you heard that, Ty. Uh, it's good to see you. Uh, I can't wait to, to see you down the road. So, that's our shout out. We have another one a little later on too. It's kind of neat. Um, you guys ready to see some live animals? Yeah? All right. I'm going to glove up. I should have asked Ty if this is cockroaches and milky for okay shout out for her today. She likes animals. She just commented, hi, Dad and Wendy. <laughs> you like animals, don't you, Ty? So we can do cockroaches and milky. You don't mind that, do you? All right. Putting gloves on. Do you guys remember why I put gloves on? Am I protecting me? Or am I protecting the animals? In this case. Yeah, I'm protecting the critters. Especially right now, with all the disinfecting and the bleaching and, and the washing and things, I want to make sure I'm amazing on my hands. Now, unlike the amphibians, I don't have to put water on my hands this time. Because the animals I brought are going to be fine with this. And again, remember, this is to make sure that whatever's on my hands doesn't get put on those animals. First animal. I want you to see. That it is a live animal. See, that's what the sign says. Da -da -da. So this is one of their travel containers. Yeah, is, you guys, it's kind of you guys ask about travel sometimes. This is how we move the Madagascar hissing cockroaches. How cool is that? Our guys 
guys are so used to being handled that they don't hiss as much anymore. I'm gonna put this over here out of the way a little bit. Make sure nobody gets away. I'll hold my hand first. This is a Madagascar hissing cockroach. And can you see those holes on the side? Can you see those holes? That's where that hissing sound comes from. Not from rubbing something in like, like a cricket, not when they rub their legs. Um, they actually push air out of those holes. Fancy science word for those, those are called spiracles. There's your science word, one of a few today, spiracles. And they make that hissing sound for several reasons. Both males and females can make the sound, but the males typically make it more often. They do it for when they're in a battle for dominance. They'll do it during mating time. But both the males and the females will hiss as a defense mechanism. You can imagine if a big predator comes down and takes a bite or kind of chomps onto them and doesn't really doesn't do anything really bad, if they make that hissing noise, like, ah, what's that noise? It sounds like a snake, it sounds like something different. I gotta let it go, I gotta get away. And as long as that, there's enough time for the cockroach to get under a log or under a branch or under a, under, under a rock, they can get away. A lot of times you guys are asking about speed, not the fastest animals in the world, but if you can get three miles an hour quickly, that's just enough to get under a branch or under a log to get away from a predator. About 4,500 species of roach, 4,000 plus species, only about 30 are pests. Not very many of them are pests, and they're all doing some pretty important stuff out there. The Madagascar hissing cockroach, hissing, the sound you heard, Madagascar, yeah, that's where they're from. This is a male. Can you see the two little bumps on top of his head? Can you get those, Wendy? Yeah. Those two little bumps on top of his head tell us that he's a male. And in battles with other males for dominance, for, for who gets the breeding rights, they'll use those just like you see um, cows or goats, just like you see deer and elk battling with their antlers or horns. They use those knobs to push, push, push on each other, trying to knock you off a branch, trying to knock you off of a leaf. No wings. Sensitive to light and touch. We mentioned they're heroes, right? We're talking about that. All three of the animals you're gonna to meet today are decomposers. That means that they're eating, rotting, dead, fallen, whatever word you wanna use, material, usually plant, but not always, on the ground. So they're recycling all those nutrients. This is an omnivore. Isn't that weird to think about that? He's an omnivore, because remember, what do, om do omnivores eat? Do omnivores eat? Yeah, omnivores eat both plants and animals. So although most of his diet is plant, he will eat carrion a lot of times. He's not gonna go hunting, but he'll eat dead stuff. He'll eat dead, dead material. The head is underneath. There I love go. this angle. Go a little, lift your hand off the table a little bit. There we go. The head is underneath that little shield. Come on guys, he's not that bad. He's kind of cute. There he is. Can you see his head? So what you see when you're looking at the Madagascar hissing cockroach from the top down, that's not the head. And those little bumps, not the eyes. The head is underneath, it's protected. So this exoskeleton on the outside of the body that keeps all the inside stuff where it's supposed to be, 
limits moisture loss and things like that, the exoskeleton on the outside of the cockroach, the head, a little bit different. Let's see if it'll come up a little bit higher. There, there. that's perfect. Is that good? They're so using, cute. Using those antenna, feeling around what's going on, who's what where. So this is a male. I want to show you a female. Remember the little knob on the top of the head? I want to show you a female. And I'll talk about the reproduction kind of weird. Strange reproduction on the Madagascar hissing cockroach. And no, I don't know their name. We have a colony of roaches here at the zoo. So we have several that program with us at the, here at the North County. Get over here, Mike. And this is a female. Notice she doesn't have the bumps on top of her head. Everything else looks the same. Wonderful camouflage color. No bumps on top of the head, though. We'll make sure you can see the difference there. So you're getting the head underneath. Now, can you come up and show your head there? She's like, no, I'm a little camera shy. I'm a little camera shy. But I got a couple of pictures I want to share with you on the reproduction. Come on, yeah. Where you can explore if you want. The Madagascar hissing cockroach has a really unique reproductive system, reproduction pattern that kind of happens. So after breeding between the male and female, the female retains the sperm. She's actually, and the, and the other cockroach, and the other roach are me too. She's essentially pregnant all the time. She's not always giving birth, but she has, she's storing the sperm. She's essentially always pregnant. When it's time to lay eggs, she creates an oothica. See, O O T H E C A, oothica. And she keeps that in her body. This is not a tail. That's not a tail, and it's not poop. That's an oothica. It's like an egg case, an egg mass. And she actually keeps it, she retains it, she keeps it in her body which is different from a lot of other roaches. So she'll keep the oothica in her body. Now this it can come in now, but she'll keep it in her body. And it, each one of those little eggs actually hatches inside her body, right? So these eggs hatch inside her body. And when she gives birth, when the babies come out, they're actually little miniature examples of a cockroach. A lot of other animals, a lot of other cockroaches, and the one you'll meet in a minute, they actually bury the oothica. They bury this egg mass, and that's what hatches. But the Madagascar hissing cockroach retains it inside the body. About 30 to 60 nymphs could be hatched. And they grow by molting. So they actually come out of that exoskeleton. They come out of the exoskeleton. So is so explain this picture to me. Is that yeah. a cockroach walking out of its own self? Absolutely. Exactly what it is. Whoa. So here's the here's the here's the exoskeleton. That's the molt. And he comes out of that. And they molt as to grow. Right? Here's a bigger example. Here's a bigger picture. Oh. I'm really thankful we don't do that. Could you imagine? <laughs> Leaving like a pile of yourself. A pile of Wendy behind? On the, like the bathroom floor. That would be weird. Back there. This was taken by one of the keepers here at the zoo, as a matter of fact. Amy Bullock understood this. This is a great example. There's the new cockroach. This is the molted cockroach. And there is that skin back there. There's that exoskeleton. And when they come out, they're that white color, stark white. Wow. And they become this dark color over time. As that exoskeleton hardens, because when they're, as soon as they molt, it's not hard. So when they're this white color, they're softer? Yes. Okay. Exactly. Yep. And they molt out. They literally, their skin splits, and they essentially walk out of it. How crazy cool is that? What an amazing adaptation. And here's a neat picture of a molted one. And you can see the white, and then that one that, one that is... An adult. Let 
nature, huh? Amazing. So uh, we had a couple questions. You talked about what they eat in the yeah. wild. Yeah. What do we feed them here at the zoo? Oh, good question. You put her back. Let go. Let go. I know. You're friendly. I'll show you, actually, because I've got some of those pictures. You can see some of it on the window of the Can you see in the back? They get sweet potatoes and carrots. They get a little bit of dog food. Um, they get a lot of fruits and vegetables. Look at the salad. Leafy plus, greens. Pl yep. Yeah, plus some soft, 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 soft dog food and things like that. And they'll get sprinkled on there, so they'll put some calcium powder or something like that on there. That's a fun question. But in the wild, anything that's rotting and decaying. Not exactly my style. Are you guys ready for a really cool critter? This is one I really like. Another cockroach. Are you guys okay with me sitting down? I hope it's okay. Not kind of awkward. I love these guys. Again, another live animal. Da 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 da. Doo, 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 doo. Travel container. Dry. Not like the cockroach that we met a second ago. Their habitat is much more dry. And I can't tell male and female here because it's tiny little pieces that you see on the back end of the abdomen that helps you tell the difference. Um, so I can't tell the difference between male and female here. Um, females are often a little bit larger than the males. And this, the one of the largest cockroach species in the world. What? One of the largest cockroach species in the world. That was weird. That, that, that was not on our, our that list. That to-do list, was it? Whew, okay, I'm sweating. We're back at it. <laughs> and there's something about this one that's different than the last one too, right? Yeah, absolutely. These guys are really neat. Look at this guy. I'm not gonna put him down because he's not gonna show up as well. There you go, make it flat, make it kind of high so you can climb. They love being on the high points, especially if you're a male. Because if you're a male, the high point, that's an advantage. When you're going to move, I'm going to stay still. <laughs> that's okay Perfect. with you. Um, they want to climb. They want to be as tall as they can be so they can take advantage of that vantage point. This is the giant cave or the Caribbean cockroach. They can max out at four inches long. That's probably longer than your index finger, if you're a kid. And for some adults. Again, really neat coloration. You can see the head and the antenna going. Giant cave cockroach. Kind of tells us where they might be from. Where might they like to live? You guys tell me I'm done for a minute. Where might the giant cave cockroach, come on guys, come on. <laughs> Where might the giant cave cockroach live? How about caves in the Caribbean? Yep. Oh, and we talked about them being decomposers. Remember, all the animals you met, we're gonna to meet today are decomposers. They're, re they're recycling nutrients. They're kind of like uh, recycling all that extra food. We saw the Madagascar hissing cockroaches, there they do it, and so does the giant cave cockroach. But in the cave, there's not as much food as you might imagine. But there is an amazing animal that lives in caves. Ooh, yes, yes there is, Steve. Yes, I know the answer, I know the answer. Shh, shh, shh. It's one of Wendy's favorite animals on the planet. So if you guys know Wendy, Cave is a wonderful home for the bat. Now, cave cockroaches, they don't eat bats, but um, they do eat bat poop. What? Right. Guano. Check this out. Since he's being so good. I've got guano. I bet they guano know about it. If any of you out there, if any of you encourage her, if any of you encourage her. <laughs> that, just, that just came from my brain right then. Can we turn your brain off? <laughs> How about that, huh? That was pretty fun. 
So yeah, so bats, the, the giant cave cockroach, the Caribbean cockroach eats, one of the things they recycle is bat guano. And you can buy it because it's really good fertilizer. It is places you can, you can purchase it. We bought that on Amazon. Yep. And in the, this container, I don't know if you're able to see it or not. Yeah. The bat guano is actually pretty dry. It's not like you might be able to imagine in some feces. The guano is actually very dry. But we don't, we don't feed them poop here at the zoo, do we? No, they get kind of much, pretty much the same diet you saw with the Madagascar hissing cockroaches. Their water is in beads, believe it or not. Their water is kind of cool. It's not real water water. It's water, but not really. It's in like a, like a gel form. So you can hear that word detritivore. Detritus. Detritus is what's on the ground, is that dead and decaying material. Just another word for it. And so this is a detritivore. Vore is to eat. Detritus. They eat detritus. They eat that rotting material. Difference between the giant cave cockroach and the Madagascar hissing cockroach is pretty obvious. They're on their back. What do these guys have that Madagascar hissing cockroaches don't? They have wings. By the way, the Madagascar hissing cockroach is in a lot of movies. If you look close when there's a bug, a lot of times it's a Madagascar hissing cockroach because the Madagascar hissing cockroach can't fly. The giant cave cockroach can fly, but not very well. They're not the best at it by any means. You guys asking questions out there? We actually had a really good question. Oh. Um, they asked if we had, um, if our vet specializes in invertebrates too. Our vet is really a good dude, Dr. J.B. Minter and Dr. Um, Katie Delk. We have two. Um, they're specialized, they specialize in everything. But the neat thing is, and I think they would tell you this, is that if you learn one species, then a lot of times you can kind of relate that to other animals. So if I know about a dog, I might know about a wolf. But yeah, they've learned this. Now you can ask J.B., he'll say that a lot of the learning happens on the job. And they consult with a lot of other people. They're talking to a lot of people. Just like with me and Wendy doing these programs, we get help. The keepers help us a lot. Our people answering questions out there are helping us a lot. Like today, we have Emily, we have Leslie, and Nikki. Beth might have even popped on. Bob might have even popped on. They're answering your questions. So in vet world, you can't, it's hard to be an expert in everything, right? So they'll, they'll get help as they need it. See those antenna and those mouth parts moving? He's, they can taste, kind of. He can smell, kind of. And I mean that in chemicals, not in smells and aromas. And again, another animal, once, once the breeding takes place, the female can store that sperm and stay pregnant, essentially, forever. This is an example of an animal who buries that oothica. Remember we talked about the oothica, the egg case, the egg mass that we saw in the picture that the, in the Madagascar hissing cockroach, the female retains it in her body and then the oothica hatches inside her body where these guys, it's, it's legs buried outside the body. And that's the all the different front of parrots do. We have a picture of one of them molting as well. I think that's kind of pretty. Isn't that a neat color? I never thought I would say a cockroach is pretty, but this cockroach is sort of pretty. I think they are. I think they're neat. I think they're neat looking. They are very interesting looking. Yeah. Um, but about... when they're a juvenile, <laughs> just gonna say. they're not, they, they make me a little nervous yeah. in the juvenile How about form. that shot right there now? And we can show you what a juvenile looks like. Let me show you what a like. juvenile looks like. All right, uh, I'm gonna say kids on this one because kids know a little bit more about their fossils than some adults. I learned that when we had dinosaurs here at the zoo. Y'all are amazing, children. And they learn that material, it's crazy cool. So the giant cave, or the giant Caribbean cockroach is who we met this in. Check out this larval stage. Check this out. Now this is, remember we talked that they molt, and five to seven molts usually 
Uh, then you're an adult. It takes maybe seven months. When you're a when you're a juvenile giant cave cockroach, I had to get my words straight. This is what you look like. Now this is a molt. This isn't a, this isn't a dead animal. This is a molt. Ta-da! Whoa! That doesn't look anything like the adult. No, it does not. How freaky is that? All right. So I know that there's some grandparents and kids out there. I know there's some, some parents with their children. This looks to me like a prehistoric marine animal. I have another, I have a picture here too. Here. I think they look like trilobites. And I concur, Steve. Thanks. Trilobite. I think they look a little bit like a trilobite. You can actually see where it split open, where it walked out of its body. See that yeah, white see that? line? I'll try to point to it a little bit right there. Yeah. And here's and a picture here. of one. Here's the adults. And there's the trilobite. Oh, sorry, I moved the picture. There's the trilobite in the middle. Now, I say trilobite. I should, I should caution you. It is not a trilobite. No. We use this as kind of a colloquial. We say, oh, can we, are there any trilobites? Are there any juveniles um, in, the, in the giant cave cockroaches? And they're fast. They're so quick. <laughs> Wendy's back and going. They make they're me kind of, nervous. Kind of funky. When I go to get them, they make me nervous because they move so fast. Isn't that neat? Very cool. So another example of a, de of a decomposer. These guys, a lot of them are recycling the back one up. And then they desiccate it out, kind of providing the soil and nutrients. Shout out. Grandparents. Especially those that are missing their grandkids. It's hard right now. Can't get out and about and see and visit. So please accept our thoughts to you guys, the ones that are, that are missing their grandkids and grandkids. I know you're missing the grandparents too. So how about a little shout out to grandparents today who are missing their grandkids. Um, we appreciate you guys tuning in. I know some of you kind of watch with your grandkids. That's kind of exciting for us. It's neat to see that. Um, one of the things that we get to watch when we're answering questions at the end. Remember, Wendy and I try to go back and answer our, answer some of the questions. Um, it's kind of cool to share that information and see, oh, you're with your grandson, or you're with your granddaughter. Uh, Zoom opening, I don't have any news, but I want to say it out loud. I don't have any news for you right now. Uh, we are going to be opening as the governor's plan kind of comes to fruition. There's some things that we've got to do um, to get ourselves ready. So we're going along with the governor's stepwise progression. Um, and we're, we're, we're still still here, still pushing along, closed but still caring um, for our animals. Uh, and we will be getting ourselves ready for you guys to open when the tunnel is ready to be open. Um, but thank you guys so much for asking. You guys do ask a lot, so I wanted to, wanted to at least tell you that we, 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 there is a plan. There is going to be a phased plan that will be put in place. Um, but it's not quite ready to start because we're not quite ready to be there yet according to the governor's plan. But do thank you for asking. Um, and we miss you guys as well. And it's amazing to see all the wonderful comments, how you guys want to come back. And, oh, I want to see Allie, the bobcat. Oh, the cougars. I want to go make sure I meet Nikita and Anana, the polar bears again. Oh, I want to see the giraffes. Um, soon. Soon. Um, I don't know what that means, but we're getting there. But thank you so much for asking and inquiring about the opening of the North Carolina Zoo. It's, it's coming. It's coming. And we miss you guys. One more live animal. You ready? I love this animal. This is probably one of my favorites to talk about. Oh, he's climbing. He's climbing. This is one of my favorites. Want a Steve joke? Here's a Steve joke. Can I do a Steve joke? Sure. You guys know what it is? You know what it is? It's a lid. Oh. <laughs> That was funny, I'll admit it. <laughs> I fell for it. <laughs> it's a little oh, look. Where are you going? You can't go anywhere. It's like just watch me. Is that a centipede? Is that a centipede? How about that I can control the camera from here? Let's see if I can go. Let's do it again. Okay? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently we don't share one brain. <laughs> Oh, I don't know about that lately. Oh, golly. Yeah, that's true. All right, guys. Yay. Meet the African giant millipede. My thing. 
meet the African giant millipede. We do have millipedes here in North Carolina. We have millipedes all over the place. There are thousands of species of millipede on the planet. Another really important job, another decomposer, another detritivore, an animal that's eating that dead and rotting material. Millipede. No, he doesn't have a thousand or a million legs. No, 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 no. But there are two sets of legs per body segment. So there's four legs per body segment. Can you see that wave of, of leg, leg action there? You want to come keep coming? There you go. Put my hand there so you can keep coming. It's like, I don't like that arm here. No, I wouldn't either. They can't move their legs independent of each other, by the way. They all move together like that, and that's just the way they, they do it. I'll put, him on the, I'll put him on the ground there in a second, so you, or on the tabletop, so you can see him moving in a sec. But they have two sets of legs, four total legs per body segment. Centipedes only have two legs per body segment, or one set of legs. They usually number, oh, I don't know, 30 segments, maybe 40 segments. Where are you going? I know somebody's asking me if it tickles, right? I know somebody's asking me if it tickles. <laughs> I like the way it feels. It feels different, that's for sure. It doesn't hurt by any stretch. Is it tickle? Kind of, sort of, maybe? It feels sort of like the bristles of a comb. Like, that. it's not, they're not soft. They're not, um, they're not slimy, but they're, they're sort of hard. Let's like a down. bristle of a comb. Let's put you down and see if they can watch. Can you, can you show them how well you walk? There they go. There you go. Look at that. Look at those. Look at that. Almost like a, a sine wave going down his legs. But I can't let you go too far because i got to turn you around. Hold on. Hold on. Male or female? Yeah, I don't know. You've got to look really closely at a certain set of legs. That's so cool. Isn't that neat? The antenna in front feeling around for those chemical cues or for what's in front of them. African giant millipede. Is he full grown? Nope. Oh, <laughs> not at all. These guys can reach maybe a foot, 12 inches in length. Are you kidding me? Might be as big around as my thumb when he's done growing. There's the antenna moving. People are asking how they would tell this apart from a centipede. Okay, let's talk about that. I'm supposed to do that. I was going to do it last, but I'll do it now, just because you asked. Centipedes and millipedes. We talked about the body segments and the legs. So let's do that again. Millipedes have four sets of legs per body segment. I'm sorry, no. They have four legs per body segment, two sets per body segment. Which centipedes only have two legs or one set of legs per body segment okay so that's way one. Second way is their body shape the millipede is more tube like you're going to see that in our craft in a moment the millipede is more is more tube like centipedes are flatter centipedes are flatter Millipedes are omnivores with a huge chunk of their diet being plants. Millipedes, like this one, are omnivores or herbivores. Centipedes are carnivores. They're meat eaters. And they're mean. <laughs> when he said, and they're mean. And the, another really, another good way to look at them is that, is that the millipede is not venomous. They are not venomous, where centipedes can be. On my watch. One last, re one last thing. What color is he? What color is this guy? You want to go down? He's kind of a dull brown, kind of your basic bug color. How's that? Is that a real thing? Can you be a basic bug color? Centipedes, if centipedes are venomous, if they're dangerous, what do some 
poisonous or venomous animals look like? Are they dull brown like this? Or if you were a poison dart frog, for example, what color might you be? Or you'd be brightly colored, right? A lot of centipedes are brightly colored. But this is the African giant millipede. Ready? Oh, and again, they're so used to being handled, which is awesome. That goes to a level of care here for North Carolina Zoo. These guys are handled, but they're okay with that. They grow by molting. I got a picture of that. They grow by molting. Can you see the picture? This is the shed of the molt, and this is a defense posture. They get in that really tight spiral. If they don't have any venom or anything, they can't protect themselves that way. That tight spiral protects them. And this exoskeleton again, which they have to shed to grow, they've got to molt to grow, it protects them. Two other things about these guys is really cool, and I'll share the crack with you. We talk about them being good tidyworks. We talk about them being decomposers and having an important job to do. After they eat that rotting food, they eat that decaying food. What time is it about 10 30? So it's, again, second breakfast might be going on, but not something else. They poop out dirt, essentially. What? Yeah, millipedes essentially poop out dirt. Or at least the soil enhancer. It's kind of weird being in the lobby because there's sounds and sometimes you see. What's that? So yeah, they kind of poop out dirt. So in their feces is a lot of nutrients. They're recycling those nutrients. And they're enhancing the soil. Thanks, Wendy. They're enhancing the soil when they defecate. That's a really important job. You recycle those nutrients, you get that nutrients back into the soil, and the millipede is really good at that, as are the cockroaches we met earlier. Poop out dirt. If they do get really upset, they're, they're tied up in that curtain, that ball, and but something messes with them. Let's say a, a lemur, we met lemurs, not necessarily these guys, but millipedes in general, they might nip at them and bite at them. They produce a toxin in between all those body segments. They produce a toxin. And that's one thing. Another, whoa, there you go. But a lot of primates have learned that if I bite at them and nip at them, they produce that toxin. I can rub that toxin all over me if I'm a primate, if I'm a lemur or a monkey. I can now take that milk and rub them on my body. And those toxins act as an insect repellent. That's crazy. How cool is that? They're even seeing recently that they'll do that to kind of get them frothed up and they'll eat it because it might actually help with some belly issues. Like an antacid? Like an antacid. A millipede antacid. Is that? And that the primates of Africa and South America have learned that. Now that's just millipedes in general. I think that's so cool to share. They're using the millipede as an insect repellent, or maybe as a medicine or an acid. How neat. So millipedes, who ever thought about that? Pooping out dirt, creating an antacid, have an insect repellent, and an amazing movement pattern of those legs. How neat. All right, put you away. Hope you guys have enjoyed meeting some of our smaller heroes in North Carolina Zoo. Double up on that shout out to grandparents. Hope Ty's still there. Hey Ty. Hey Conkin. All right. Craft. I love the craft. Nikki. I'll tell you what. Nikki on there today. Yeah, Nikki's in. I have my whoever's answering questions over there. Nikki. Knock it out of the park one more time, huh? This is so cute. Even I can make this craft. Paper towel tunes. 
Toilet paper tubes are amazing partners, right? Look at this. Put it on the table. Let me get close up. Look at those legs, Steve. Quite They're amazing. So many. He's got two sets of legs for body segment. Those I know he does. Eyes. They're so round. And buggy. And the googly. Antenna, the antenna over there. Look at these body segments. So many. They're like perfectly measured. And two sets of legs per body segment. They're actually scientifically accurate, I'll Steve. I them as a millipede. Nature is so perfect. And look, it's happy. <laughs> I couldn't do it anymore. <laughs> Check that out. That's all it is. Amazing. I'm kind of... I, I get nervous doing these programs, but I'm so glad I'm on this side. Nikki, that's amazing. That's so cool. All right, millipede. Alright, clean that. Look over here. I think that's it. How cool is that? So, magnets are using cockroaches. Awesome. Pass through those spiracles, pushing air out. Not rubbing anything together makes sound. Detritivore or decomposer. Giant cave cockroach with a Caribbean giant Caribbean cockroach. Living in caves, recycling the nutrients from what animal? The bat. And what part of the bat? Uh, the poop. And then we met the millipede, having to that wonderful exoskeleton, but eating dirt, eating dirt, eating dirt, another decomposer, and then pooping out dirt, or at least a soil enhancer. Let's say that. So an awesome day. All right, here's a scoop. I've got some scoop for you. Friday is taped. Friday is taped because we weren't sure how the animals were going to kind of respond to the weather. And the signal there is also not ideal. But you ought to watch it, because it's really good. I mean, it is utterly amazing what happened. So if you get a chance, tune in. Scoop on this. Wendy and I will be typing and answering questions for you. So we can still talk to you. It'll just be via text or via typing. So do tune in on Friday, 10 o'clock, um, to watch a very special animal um, go through some really cool enrichment and to see some, see him moving in a really fun way. You ought to be there, okay? You ought to be there. Um, and I want to give you a heads up now. Monday is Memorial Day, and Wendy and I are off. Um, so we will not be with you on Monday morning at 10 o'clock. But we'll be back next Wednesday with a live, behind-the-scenes kind of thing going on. And I think you want to check it out. But we'll make sure that there's an announcement for that. So Friday is taped. You ought to be there. Wendy and I will be there answering your questions live. Okay? Got it? Get it? Got it? Get it. Guys, enjoy your Memorial Day holiday. We're so happy that you came and brought us back into your classroom. I hope you're doing well. I hope you're doing well. As I keep saying, there is, that, there is a light at the end of the tunnel. I just don't know how long the tunnel is. But we do see it coming, right? So thank you for bringing us into your classrooms, into your home. And you're living in your dining room, your kitchen, bring us into under your deck. Probably not your deck today. Um, and we're sad to be with you. Thank you for letting us be part of your lives at this time. Enjoy your weekend. Stay safe. We'll see you again soon. Bye, guys.